So one of the great things about Tektronix waveform monitors is that you can easily get to these very specialized displays at the touch of a button. The WFM 5200 allows you to see four different images if you want to on the screen at the same time. Only two of them can be what we call trace displays. In other words, it has a vector scope and a waveform or a gamut display and a waveform. Then you can also have the monitor, picture monitor, to see what you're looking at. And you can also see uh, some other display over here that's mostly either text or audio. You can have these in any order that you want, wherever you want them, it's lined up along the sides if you want to. That's not a problem, but um, basically you have picture monitor, two trace displays, and this one. So how do you jump back and forth quickly between them? Because that's really how you can gain a lot of efficiency when you're trying to look at a waveform monitor while you're color correcting. It's very simple. If you hit the preset button down here, hit preset, and then along here there's a bunch of soft buttons that say waveform, vector, picture. You kind of ignore these and look at the actual display up here on the monitor itself. And these say RGB vector, RGB 5X, LQV low, LQV high, bright up, gamut, LQV, and then factory. And you can actually type these names in yourself. Those can be whatever customized names you want. And let me just quickly run through some of them so you can see how fast this is to call up. Basically what I just did is hit preset and waveform, and that got me this waveform display with a vector scope. If I hit the next one over, if I hit preset and I hit the it says vector here, but up here it says RGB 5X. If I hit that, then you see it's an RGB waveform, and then over here is a 5X zoom. So I don't even have to go into gain and choose the zoom in anything like that. If I've got this set up as a preset, it's as simple as hitting preset and then RGB 5X. LQV Low is one of the really specialized patented displays from Tektronix, and it looks like a vector scope up here, but if you look very closely up here in this uh, top corner, it says the high is 100 uh, millivolts and the low is negative 5114. What this really is telling me, and I set these numbers up, customized myself, is that all we're looking at is the blacks of the vector scope. So you're not being confused in this image by all this middle tone stuff, all the green grass and green bushes and stuff. All that stuff is kind of zeroed out and all we're looking at is the dark shadows in this LQV display. It's a Luma qualified vector. In other words, it's a vector scope that is only showing you a specific tonal range. And I've got it dialed in to only show me my shadows. Now if I press preset, you'll see that the next one over says LQV high. If I press that one, it looks almost the same as the one I just got, but notice it looks a little different. That's because this is showing me the Luma qualified vector only it's going from 600 millivolts up to 766. So that means it's just showing me this very top part of this waveform monitor is all that's showing up in the vector scope. So you're able to see, since there's a lot of bright green stuff up here, you're seeing this vector scope leaning off towards yellow green because of all of this really bright green stuff. So it's different than if we hit preset and look at LQV low. LQV low is just showing us our deep shadows and they're much less over towards this green area, much more centered. So that's a way to quickly jump and be able to see these LQV displays that are very customizable. If I hit preset, you can see the next one I have over is called a bright up display. Well, it looks exactly like the display I just had. Now, why is that? Well, what you can't see is that in this uh, picture monitor, what I'm able to do is if I go over into my uh, color correction mode here and I pull down my setup, or I crank up my gain, you'll see that in these bright areas, you're starting to see this crosshatch pattern right here. Like there's black stuff showing up in the bright stuff, even though I'm going so bright. Those black crosshatches are what Tektronix calls a bright up display. And the bright up display shows you where specifically in the picture you're getting to be illegal. In other words, these levels in here that are going kind of this black crosshatch this is going illegal, and I can drag this back down until all that stuff disappears. I can also see where it first happens. And by getting rid of it all, that allows me to specifically see where in the picture that those illegal levels are happening. You can do the same thing on the dark side. It's uh, probably a little hard for you to see, but I can definitely 
um, use those same bright up displays to show me illegal black levels, illegal brightness levels. Let me show you how you can get to those specifically. It's in the config display. If I press config and go to display settings, you can just turn this dial right here to go up and down this uh, set of menus. Press the arrow button to go over and see bright up on Luma gamma error. You can also do picture bright up on composite gamut error and picture on RGB gamut error. And I've got all these turned on. You just go over here and turn them on and off with the arrow keys. And when, with those turned on, you can turn off your config display and that bright up is set. So I had already done that step when I saved this preset. But there's no reason to continually have to go in and set up things like the bright up displays because once you've set them up once, you save them as a preset. And I'll show you how to do that. For example, let's say I want to have um, this be a gamut display. All I have to do is use the thumbnail button to choose that specific thumbnail. See how it's highlighted with the, the uh, bright blue line. Now that it's highlighted, I can choose the gamut display and I can pick which gamut display I want to choose. I like this uh, double diamond, so I'll keep it on double diamond. Now, let's say I want to save this as RGB with double diamond. Hit preset, and we're going to save it over this factory display. So I'm just going to hold down the other button. I'm going to hold this for a couple of seconds. And it says save this as preset number eight. And I get a choice of continue or cancel. If I wanted to cancel, I just press this arrow button to get over to cancel. I want to choose continue, so I'll press the arrow button to go over to continue. Hit enter. And it saved this preset. If I want to save it, and right now it's called factory, if I wanted to save this and call this diamond, I'd hold down the preset button. And notice that one of my choices here is rename preset. So I'm going to rename the preset in group A. I'm going over to the word factory down here. I go down, down, down. I'm down to factory. Press the over button. And now you can see factory is in here. Just press the uh, arrow buttons a couple times until I get over factory. And we're just going to call this R. So I'm going to use the general dial up here to choose G. We're going to call it RGB. So I'll just go to R. Go over arrow button. Change A to G. Change C to B. T will change to uh, underscore. RGB, and then we're going to call this diamond. So I'm just going to go back to D. You can see how easy it is to change the names. DI, we'll call it MN. DI for diamond. Uh, well, DIM and then N. There we go. And then you just press the arrow button over it accept and then press the select button in the middle and now you can see that the name of that is RGB DIMN if I hit my preset button you can see now that in the bottom this used to say factory now it says RGB diamond and I can press uh, one of these this gets me back to my preset one with the vector scope and if I hit preset and this button now I get back to my diamond that I just saved so that's a quick tutorial on how to set up and use presets to do very efficient color correction with Media Composer and the Tektronix WFM 5200.